Paragraph 12, so we're on to topic 5 of this um, chapter on differentiation, and this is actually going to be our last topic. There is actually a sixth um, topic, which is differentiation of trig functions, but we haven't done enough trig in normal maths yet, and so the moment we do trig in normal maths, we'll come back and do topic 6, um, which is differentiation of trig functions. So this is the last one, so probably quite a short video because higher order derivatives there's nothing really to learn other than the fact that higher order derivatives mean that you can go beyond the first derivative which we know from normal maths. Uh, we all know that the first derivative so we've discussed this in normal maths um, the second derivative is useful because it tells us about concavity, but in practical situations, it also tells us like acceleration. Um, and then after that, you get the third derivative and the fourth derivative, and you can get the nth derivative. Um, but they stop having meaning. So just to quickly go over this notation, if you remember that, the second derivative. So you'll see that that is a really nice notation, but don't confuse it as um, the derivative squared or anything. That if you were squaring a derivative, and then you'll see it's not f to the power of 4 that's why it's in a bracket it's a notation um, and then obviously the so that's just the notation thing. So we've only got three examples because there's not really much to talk about. We have done this in normal math. The first question is the term on the sixth derivative of the next, while the first derivative is equal to um, the first derivative of the next, while the first derivative is equal to the basic evaluator math, bring down the sum. Just the constant lands up disappearing, and so ultimately, the more derivatives you make, the more terms are just going to land up disappearing. So now I get two Term originally, which makes sense because every other term would have landed up disappearing, uh, which is kind of boring um, and kind of not really uh, useful for anything, but anyway, it's quite fun. So, example two determine the third derivative of the Don't worry about the negative three, it's just to pay efficient, so I'm going to bring down the negative two. Three, six, nine, four, 
So that's a little bit more interesting. So a to the times six would be a hundred and c x minus four to the power of negative four. Now what is pretty cool is when you try and derive a formula for the nth term, and that's pretty cool. Um, it used to be in the curriculum, and so you'll see it in past papers. And this year for the first time. Um, last year for the first time, it started being out of the curriculum. So it would be quite exciting to find the answer. Okay, so you can find the set of the could bring those, um, I, I don't really want to bring it to the top and make it a product, so I probably would leave that as a quotient. Um, So I want it to be as neat as possible. Because minus x squared minus four is not the same as Be two, so it's two x squared minus four now to the power of one is multiplied by the derivative of the inside and then all over the bottom is four, which is x squared minus four because I'm squaring it. Now I definitely need to So it is a minus, but 2 times 2x is 4x, and then minus x squared minus 4 times x squared minus 4. And so that was quite a nice thing because, I mean, you know, quite That's pretty nifty. Now, that's pretty much the end of the lesson because other than, you know, looking at the notation and practicing a couple of examples, um, higher order derivatives when we use them to plot graphs and to work with acceleration they're quite useful but otherwise they're just really for fun so that's the end of that and that actually ends this whole section so the next thing we're going to do is um, a mixed exercise on everything we've learned in differentiation so far um, and then that's it we can move on to graph sketching and actually using these derivatives which will be awesome